So to answer this overarching question, we created the Energy Evolution, which as I've said, is this step-by-step -step journey to actually changing your life. It's really simple, systematic, and it works with the way your energy field is structured. And this is a really important piece of the puzzle. What we're doing is approaching one key area of your life, one subject at a time. And what that does is actually creates this domino effect, which multiplies the amount of inflow or receptive energy that you actually then have available to you to help combat the next area of your life. So I always imagine it like um, you're unlocking the gates along a river or along a canal. So we undo the first gate, we clear up all the energy, we clear up all the water, whatever it is that's held in that first lock. And we open the gate and that energy then goes and washes over the next subject. And now we then work, we've got twice the amount of energy that we then do the work on the next subject and get that in alignment and get that area of your life working for you instead of against you. Then you open the next lock and it opens and now you've got three times the amount of energy. But it isn't just three times the amount of energy because as that energy comes together, it truly begins to amplify. And so what you've created is one, you're no longer got chaos and drama in that area of your life because you've worked through the resistances, you've worked through the drama, you've worked through the self-sabotage patterns or whatever it is, however it was showing up for you. Then you've got more time, you've got more energy. You're no longer firefighting. Things start working out for you things start appearing for you, new opportunities start appearing for you, the right people, the right time, the right places all start unfolding in front of you. And what you then create is actually a strong foundation. Because we work with the structure of your energy system, we're systematically clearing out each layer of your aura. What that actually means is your whole energy field expands. Your whole being becomes so much more. So it takes a while. <laughs> the journey that we used to share took 10 months for people to work through. And the truth is, you will always be going through that journey. Like I said, I'm, I'm a completely different person. The beautiful thing with the process is it gives you a structure to follow. It doesn't matter where you're at in your life. It doesn't matter what you think you have done and resolved already. I can guarantee there will be something else for you to do some work on. Within the energy evolution, we look at three key areas of your life, which we call your soul, your life and your work. Now, under each of those headings are some key aspects of what makes what makes up each one. The, the thing is, the first one, let's begin with your soul. Your soul is made up of the elements which only you ever experience. Nobody else experiences you. Nobody else experiences what happens in your energy. Nobody else experiences the thoughts that you have. Nobody else experiences what emotions you feel or what's going on in your physical body. Only you experience those things. So there are four elements to the your soul piece, your energy, your thoughts, your emotions, and your health, your physical health. Then we have the areas of your life. Now, these are the aspects that, these are the areas that you share with, with other people. So it's things, and people that matter to you. It's things like your home, your environment, the space that you're in, obviously people maybe that you work with as well. It's your relationships and your lifestyle, meaning things that you do that are just for fun. You know, this isn't work. These are things like, that we'll, we'll talk about them in more depth, but it's, it's all the elements that make up life outside of work and outside of you. Then we have your work. Now, this is about you making your impact in the world. That's when you are using your flow state to make money 
or to make a difference or and not at all and make a difference in the world it's about understanding your passion and your purpose and what you're here for so all of these different areas make up who we are they make up our day-to-day life this is our experience and there are so many aspects to who you who you are and what brings you joy in life so let's take a little bit of a deep dive into each one of those areas so that you've got a better understanding these go in order okay we work from your soul to the end your work and the reason for that is most people are trying to resolve their work. They're trying to sort out their career. They're trying to sort out their money. They're trying to sort out the success thinking, if I can just sort out my life and sort out my business, then I'll have money, which means I can then have the lifestyle I want, which then I'll be happy in my relationships, which means my home will be lovely. And then I'll have time to look after my health. I'll feel better. Um, I'll think better. And then I'll have time to go and sit on top of a mountain and meditate. When the truth is, it comes from the other way. It's all about us from the inside out and creating that strength so that we can expand. So from the top, number one, the first element of your soul is your energy connection. What we really mean by that is like getting this the system, the functional system working I don't know if you remember in one of the previous podcast episodes where we talked about the body's energy systems and there are multiple systems, just like there are multiple organ systems in our physical body, there are multiple energy systems that keep us going. So the first thing that we do is make sure that the system's working. You know, are your chakras all working? Are your auras all, you know, auras? Uh, Is your aura working? Um, Generational patterns, things from your past, anything that's affecting you, Um, big energy reversals. There's like a systematic process that we go through. And obviously there's far more detail than what I'm highlighting here. But this is ultimately about making sure the machine, your energy body, is in that receptive state. Then you look at your thoughts and beliefs. And this is what you would um, refer to as anything to do with your, your mental activity. Most people associate it with your brain. This is actually the mental layer of your aura. So then we have thoughts and beliefs. Now, what we're really looking at here are all of those things that you would associate with mental activity, your self-sabotage patterns, your thoughts, your beliefs, your core values, um, personality traits, the language that you use, self-imposed limitations that you might have. Um, And really all of this is about quietening quietening that mental internal chatter because this voice in our head is the one that holds us back far more than anything else that is really going on in our lives so we need to make sure that our mental energy is working with us instead of against us number three is then working on your emotions once we start to look at your emotions your we remember so much more about how we feel in a situation than anything that gets said. Your emotions are a massive, massive piece of your day-to-day life experience. And when you understand the power that your emotions have over shaping your day-to-day life and your ability to manifest, that they're an indication of what's going on in your energy field. When you see them for what they are, you can use them in an, in an empowering way Rather than thinking, oh God, I feel so stressed, or oh God, I feel so depressed, or oh God, I feel like really anxious. It's like, okay, I'm feeling really anxious. I know this is just energy. I know this is a sign of something going on in my energy. That means I need to now do some work. I now need to do some EAM. So your emotions are amazing. There is an incredible amount of science that sits behind your emotions, the impact that they have on your health, your well-being, and as I was saying, your flow state and your capacity to be able to manifest or create anything in your life. So by learning to pay attention to your emotions, it's one of the quickest ways to start getting yourself into into flow or into being happy. Then we've got the physical health. Number four is our physical health. Now, because of the way our energy system is structured, 
your physical body is is the slowest vibrating part of your whole energy field. In those first three elements where we looked at your energy, your thoughts and emotion, your thoughts and then your emotions, we were working our way systematically in through our aura. Now our physical body is a representation of everything that's going on in our energy field. So by the time we get to work on your physical health, what you've actually done is released many of the things in your energy field that were creating the stress, things that were causing the pain in your back, things that were making you feel anxious, things that were causing that sicky feeling. Because you've cleared them from your energy field, now your energy, your body, your physical body can start to heal itself because it's no longer seeing or feeling or perceiving that thing there in your energy field as like a danger signal. We will definitely, definitely deep dive into this in in future episodes. It's, It's a lot to take on board. But what I want you to take from this is your physical health is so much more, so much more than this flesh, blood and bone perspective that Western medicine would have us believe. Your body is not a machine. You are not a machine. You are a beautiful codependent, interdependent, interrelational, amazing system. And what you think and feel, what's going on in your energy field, what's going on in your environment, impacts your physical health more than you can possibly imagine. By working on those other pieces first, what we actually do is create space in our physical health for our body to then be able to repair itself, which is what your body does best when we give it the right food when we give it the right nutrition when we give it the right amount of sleep and water and of course eam or alignment your body can heal itself of anything it's what it's designed to do now i know i'm probably supposed to put some caveat around that but your body is designed to heal that is what it's designed to do will it fully resolve everything maybe maybe not But I'd rather give it a damn good go (laughs) and give it every opportunity it can to be at maximum health. So four elements of your soul we've taken a look at. Your life are, as I said earlier, these are the elements that make you make up the life that you share with others. So now we've looked at your physical health. Now it's about your physical space. Many of you may have heard of Feng Shui. Um, I'm not sure I never pronounced that correctly. Apologies to any consultants, Feng Shui consultants, like my friend Janine Lowe. Please don't hit me. Uh, (laughs) Your physical space, what's going on in your environment matters so much. Just very simply, think think about your house when, you know, when it's full of clutter, you know, when there's just mess everywhere, Uh, you know, the washing needs sorting out, there's dishes all over the place, Uh, the bathroom towels are on the floor, there's socks everywhere as it happens in my life. I don't know what, me and socks have got an issue, Um, but (laughs) maybe I've got an issue with socks. I don't think socks has an issue with me. But the reason I'm sharing this is because what's going on in your physical space really impacts you. Um, Even without stepping into the world of feng shui, just simple decluttering making sure that the environment that you live in nurtures you it supports you you know you're not walking around your house all the time thinking my god I hate this space or I hate living here because all of those things affect you you know if you're sitting and working in a tiny little crammed up little corner of somewhere it's not an open relaxed flow state for you to be in so your environment matters um you know, the Wi-Fi signals that are in your house. Are you living under a massive power line? Are you living next to a telephone mast? All of these things impact your vibration massively. Relationships. Oh my life. We will definitely be doing future episodes on all of these, but relationships, we could talk about this forever and ever and ever. Relationships are one of the most powerful pulls on our emotions. Always have been, always will be. 
And that's because relationships are the first things that we form when we are born. We literally need them in order to survive. When we're a tiny little baby, if we don't create relationships and bonds with the people around us, they're not going to be taking care of us. What do we do? We can't feed ourselves. We can't change ourselves. You know, we can't, we can't take care of ourselves. We can't wash ourselves. We can't clean ourselves. We bond to people around us, even if the people around us aren't serving us in, the, in, in their most highest love or light. So relationships is massive and they pull on our energy and attention more than anything else. Now, I'm going to hold my hands up. Are you? Sometimes I don't show up in my relationships in the way that I would love to. I know better. You know, I, <laughs> I, I, I know I'm not always as loving as I would like to be. And I'm a human being still in this experience. But the reason that I'm sharing that with you is because relationships play a massive part. Who you hang around with matters so much. If you're spending your time around people who are consistently down, who are consistently negative, who are consistently moaning, whinging, complaining, telling you how they can't do this and they can't do that and talking about all the chaos that's going on in their life, I'm not saying stop talking to them, but I'm saying choose where you spend your time because whilst everybody needs space to be heard and supported, we want to be with people who bring us up. You want to spend time with people who lift you up. You want to spend time with people who talk positively, who share positive things, who who can talk about the future and what's to come or just somewhere that you can you can be you without getting dragged into the negativity and that's sometimes easier said than done there 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 is a massive 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 conversation for us to have around this relationships piece um because most families again this comes back to the old paradigm new paradigm conversations that we've had before but most most families are unconscious of their behaviors Uh, both in their verbal and non-verbal communication. They don't fully understand the impact of their actions. Um, And what that means is that we end up creating these, just these default operating patterns with how we show up in our relationships now. And that is impacting us and it's massively impacting our children or friends or loved ones as well. Most people love to to point the finger. They love to place blame. They believe that everything that's going on in their life is outside of them. Um, you know, they the, it's that person's problem or this person's problem and we have to fight this and we have to beat that person down. And absolutely, there are <laughs> there are things in this world right now that most definitely need change and our continued focus on the negativity of what's there is only going to create more of the things that we'd say that we don't want. I'm going to hold my hand up again. I know I get caught in Telegram sometimes reading some posts. I'm like, oh my God, what the hell's happening? I need to look at this because I need to understand. And then I need to not look at this because I need to stay in alignment with where I'm at and what we're creating and the change we're bringing to the world. I'm sharing this with you because this is about stepping into your power. This is about you identifying the people that you want to be around. And I'm not saying ignore everybody who's negative at all. I'm saying find the right people, find the communities. EAM definitely being one of them where you can expand yourself, where you can continue to grow and you will be supported in moving forward instead of being pulled down and dragged back. So lifestyle, this is the last part of the your life piece. What we're talking about here, we're now in the mental level of your aura, but what we're talking about here is really expanding yourself, 
expanding your knowledge, your skills, your expertise. What do you want to learn? What do you want to do? Who do you want to become outside of work? You know, where are you going to spend your time? Where do you want to go on holiday? What new courses do you want to learn? What books do you want to read? What are those things that you want to discover about yourself and about life? What new skills do you want to have? Um, You know, do you want to learn taekwondo or self-defense or archery or cooking or whatever it might be? This is about what brings fun, joy and excitement to your life beyond getting up every single day, doing the same thing time and time again, getting up, going to work, coming home, cooking dinner, watching telly, going to bed. What are you going to do to break that routine? What are you going to do to bring fun and enjoyment into your life? Most adults put enjoyment at the bottom of their list if it's on their list at all. Somewhere along the way, we seem to think that becoming an adult means that we have to become boring or we've simply allowed our responsibilities to become so big or more important than our happiness and joy. Now, here's the thing. From an energy perspective, when we have fun, when we expand, when we experience joy, that's actually when we're in alignment. So the more fun that we actually have, the quicker things will actually manifest for you. So what can you do to bring joy to your life? What can you do to have fun, not just once a week, not just once a month? What can you do to bring joy in every single day? What are those things that are important to you? Then we move into the last section, which is all about your work. So we've done that work now. You've looked at your soul. You've looked at your life. They're all of the things outside of work. And now, like I said, we've been systematically unlocking all of these doorways and all of those areas of your life are now in flow. So now what that means is you've got the full time and energy to just focus on manifesting money, making your difference in the world. And that's really what the Your Work piece is all about. So the first piece of this section is the one that everybody is always waiting for, is the manifesting money, creating money, wealth and abundance. We all require money in order to live on planet Earth. There you go. I said it. I might be the only spiritual coach in the world to have said it. No, I know that's not true. But you will hear a lot of people talk about having you know being spiritual means you can't make money and if you're making money being spiritual then you're evil or um, you're taking from people when you should be using your gifts I actually think that money is the most beautiful gift that we've been given the problem being money has been massively massively misused massively there is I mean this is this is something I used to do whole weekend workshops on around money. And in fact, I might end up bringing one back. Um, but the reason I'm sharing all of this is because money, like everything, money is an energy. And the, the problems that most people have around money is, is less about money itself. It's about the pressure that we put on money. If you think about it, the reason that we often want money is because, like I said, we you know we want to go on holiday, we want to enjoy ourselves, we want to enjoy things in our relationships, we want to take our children away or our partner away or go off on holiday, we want to do the house up, we want to buy a new car. You know, we, we want money because we want the things that we can buy with the money. But what we really want is the feeling that we're going to have when we buy the thing. The reason we want the thing is because we want to feel better than we do. So the money isn't really about the money. The money is actually often attached to feeling better. But the problem is most people feel really crap about money. They talk very negatively about money. They worry about money. 
consistently. They're constantly in the fear state around money. They're constantly feeling scared. They're constantly worried about where the next money's gonna come from. And this is not coming from a place of judgment whatsoever. But what I'm sharing with you is whilst we stay focused on what's not there, we create more of the same. And so the whole thing around money, working on your money stuff, isn't something you can just fix overnight. I'm sorry. Um, despite how many programs you've probably bought that have told you that you can do it in 24 hours and just da 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 da, we can definitely create some shifts in a tiny amount of time. But working on your money stuff is huge. Um, there are so many aspects to it. There's, it's your thoughts, it's your emotions, it's your self sabotaging beliefs. There's money traumas, it's all the stuff that your parents went through, it's the generational patterns, meaning the, the things that have happened in your family lines around money. There's your relationship with how you spend money, with how you receive money, with how you deal with your debts, with how you ask for money, with how you make money, with your ability to make money, with your, with your deservingness or your worthiness, with your limits around money, with your capacity to make more money. Um, from a practical perspective, how are you actually bringing money into your life? Um, you know, are you investing the money that you have or are you just spending all the money that you have? Money is massive. So just sitting there and meditating on, I am ready to allow myself to receive a million pounds. It's, it's not going to allow you to bring the million pounds in if you've got minus a million in your bank account. We have to go on the emotional and energetic journey to align ourselves to money and wealth and then take the practical aligned action steps in the real world. There are things that we have to do. There are changes that you have to make to start creating the changes around money. And money is massive. Um, and I love money. Just saying this out loud. I love money and money loves me. And I want you to repeat that out loud as many times as possible every single day. <laughs> I love money and money loves me. Then we work on working on your money and wealth and abundance. Then we take a look at your passion and purpose. Most people... <laughs> Most people think that their purpose is about what they do in the world. You know, when you say to someone, what's your purpose? And they're like, oh, I'm a, they'll give you their job title. Your purpose is not what you do. Your, your purpose is about who you are. Your purpose is something you've probably been doing all of your life since you were little. Um, my purpose is to teach. Absolutely, my purpose is to teach. I know I'm here to teach. Doesn't matter what I'm teaching, but as long as I'm teaching. And if I look back, all the way back through my life, and these are the, some of the things that we will definitely talk about in future episodes as well, but your purpose is, is something that you have to express. It's like, if you don't do it, it feels like you may as well not be living. And that's, teaching is definitely one of them for me. But if you look back at your life, you'll probably notice that you've been doing it all your life. If I look back to my childhood, um, my mum worked at the school, so after after school, I was always at the school. When all the other kids had gone home, there was me wandering the corridors, mooching around between the other teachers' classrooms, helping them out, get ready for the next day. So since I've been little, I've been in the teaching environment, and I was always helping people. You know, obviously I wasn't lesson planning, but <laughs> I was helping I've always been in that teaching role. Some people at school might have called me bossy. I don't know where they would have got that from. <laughs> um, but I, I just love to talk, which you probably have gathered by now. But I just, I love to teach and I love to talk. And I think there are so many big conversations to be had in the world. But what is that for you? So many people sacrifice discovering their purpose or finding their life purpose. <sighs> because they want a paycheck. And I, I, again, I'm not judging that at all. But if you're getting up every day and doing a job that you hate to make money, you're never going to find the true happiness that you're searching for. And the reason I can say that is you're spending 30% of your life completely out of alignment every single day from the moment you open your eyes. If you don't love what you're doing, in your day-to-day, -day, you need to start making plans to one, get clear what it is that you want to do, 
and two actually start making some practical changes to to bring it into your life as well I am not one of those people that's like just leave your day job you know just everything will everything will appear because actually very often what happens is it throws you into distress when on month one there is no money in the bank um, as you're fulfilling your purpose so it's definitely a plan but a short plan I don't want you to give me like oh yeah, I'm going to do it in two years. No, that's not a plan. That's an excuse. Um, So what I want, what I invite you to do is to create a short-term plan. Get clear what it is that you want to be doing, of course, and then let's make like a three, no more than six-month plan. No more than six-month plan to move into or bring into you doing your life purpose, even if it's only half the week even if it's only half the week it's about the flow state that will bring which will bring money and happiness and opportunities in from places you can't even imagine so then we've got the very very last piece this is element 10 making your impact making your impact is like we've we now we've aligned all of these areas of us and we're now ready to really show up in the world to actually take action and put your life's work like into practice. Now you've done all of those other elements. This is about how you express yourself in the wider world. Whether you work for yourself, whether you work for somebody else, this is you doing what you're here for. And you can use EAM in your work, in your business, in your marketing, in your job, around speaking, um, you know, getting getting a promotion. You can use it to work on your marketing copy. Uh, you can use it to work on that boss at work who annoys the hell out of you. You can use it in so... Maybe you could even EAM them out of their own job and get their job. Oh, that might be a good idea. <laughs> um, you know, you can use EAM in so many different ways when it comes to making your impact in the world. And aligning to what you want and creating opportunities and seeing amazing, amazing things showing up for you. Those are the 10 elements. It really is that simple. Um, It really is that simple. And by working through all of that in a systematic order, what you then create, instead of chaos and wondering where the hell do I start with sorting my life out, we start at the beginning and you'll soon start to create flow. You'll soon start to create this just beautiful feeling of flow and alignment in so many areas sometimes you'll have to go back you know I'm not saying you're going to get it all solved in day one it doesn't take a day anyway Um, (laughs) by working through it in that order and allowing yourself to bring that alignment in as you create more flow life becomes easier and that's really what we all want is more ease, more happiness, more opportunities, more money, more love, more support, more time. We just want to feel more empowered, like everybody wants those things. And that's exactly what the energy evolution does for you. So as we do in every single episode, this is our opportunity to actually put the five steps of EAM into practice around what we've just been talking about. For those of you who have never heard EAM before, I'm about to lead you through steps four and five of the process. If you are operating heavy machinery or somewhere or driving, please do not follow the instructions of closing your eyes. Um, But you can say the words out loud and you can follow along and do the steps. But please just do this in a place where you are safe. Um... If you're somewhere listening right now where you can't say the words out loud, just listen to me um, and allow that this, know that this will bring the change in for you as well. So I invite you to close your eyes for me. Take a nice deep breath in. Arms down by your sides. Okay. So step four, I'm going to, we're going to do a release statement. I'm going to repeat the statement out loud three times and I invite you to repeat the words out loud after me. Step five is an empowerment statement, which is basically the reverse of what we just said um, in step four. And it is best said 
with your arms above your head with your palms facing up if you can't do it with your arms above your head just put your palms facing up in your lap okay so just close your eyes again for me allow yourself to be present I am ready to release anything which is causing chaos, creating limits, or holding me back. I am ready to release the stories I tell myself, which keep me stuck, so I can be free to create the life I love. I release this from my energy, in all forms, on all levels, at all points in time. I am ready to release anything which is causing chaos, creating limits, or holding me back. I release the stories I tell myself which keep me stuck, so that I can be free to create the life I love. I release this from my energy, in all forms, on all levels, and at all points in time. One more time. I am ready to release anything which is causing chaos, creating limits, or holding me back. I release the stories I tell myself which keep me stuck so I can be free to create the life I love. I release this from my energy in all forms, on all levels, and at all points in time. Okay, step five. Arms above your head if you can. I am ready to allow myself to be true, to get clear what I want, to create flow in each area of my life, step by step, so that I can create easily for me and the people I love. I live abundantly on all levels of my life. I allow this into my energy, in all forms, on all levels, and at all points in time. I am ready to allow myself to be clear what I want, to create flow in each area of my life, step by step, so that I can create easily for me and the people I love. I live abundantly on all levels of my life. I allow this into my energy, in all forms, on all levels, and at all points in time. I am ready to allow myself to be true to, my, to me, to be clear what I want, to create flow in each area of my life, so that I can create easily for me and the people I love. I live abundantly on all levels of my life. I allow this into my energy in all forms, on all levels, and at all points in time. Nice deep breath in. And out. I would love to know what you saw, felt, or experienced with this, so please do let me know. I just, I always, always, always love to hear the shifts that you have. Just one simple takeaway from today. Using the list that I gave you, working, and if you need to write this down again, do this now. Energy connections, thoughts and beliefs, emotions, physical health, space, relationships, lifestyle, money, passion and purpose, and making an impact. Just see which one of those, you can ask your sway, if you're confident with your sway, ask your sway which one of those areas is out of alignment. And then it might be more than one. Start with the first one, the one nearest the beginning, and then start to explore. Do some work using EAM to explore that area of your life and start putting any aspect that maybe you've been avoiding because some of us do have a tendency to do that um 
into practice so that you can really start to bring alignment into more and more and more and more areas of your life every day. That's what we want. That is what we want. So with all of that said, please remember from my heart to yours, thank you for listening to the show. My name's Yvette Taylor, your host of The Energy Revolution. If you love the podcast, please subscribe and leave a five-star rating and review. If you love the show, please share and spread this message to your friends. If you want to discover more or be part of our EAM community and the energy revolution, visit www.discoveream.com forward slash pod. Um, and you'll get your copy of the five steps and a short video showing you how to put EAM into practice. Just if you're new, just very simply come and register for like a billion reasons. Come and be part of the community. Thank you for being here wherever you are. Remember whatever you're doing. You have the power to change your life by changing your state. And together, the more of us that bring ourselves into alignment, into alignment, the wider we can send these ripples out into the world. Until next time, stay in flow.